I get questions quite often from readers of the A plus exam cram about SATA terminology and measurement. Specifically, there's a couple commonly confused concepts. The first is bits versus bytes. When do you use bits? When do you use bytes when you're dealing with SATA drives? And the second is the encoding of data. How does it work? And how does that play into the measurement? How does it play into the amount of data? So let's take a look at the following table. This is, uh, this can be found in the A plus exam cram sixth edition on page 146. We've got the standards, the various SATA revisions up to 3.0, and we have their maximum data transfer rates. Now this is the amount of data that can be transferred to the drive over the SATA cable per second. So first, let's talk bits versus bytes. Note that it shows the serial measurement in bits. How can you tell? This is denoted by the lowercase b. For example, 1.5 g lowercase b slash s. That's 1.5 gigabits per second. Sometimes some of my readers will use an uppercase b which is not correct because that would denote bytes. Serial technologies such as SATA are normally measured in bits. For example, 1.5 gigabits per second, 3.0 gigabits per second, and so on. Ultimately, that number is later converted to bytes. For example, 150 megabytes per second, M uppercase B per second. Now, this helps some people to visualize data better because this was the way that hard drives, IDE and SCSI drives, were measured for decades. That is, until SATA came along. So now you see the data transfer rate measured in bits. So the second thing, let's discuss encoding. Sometimes people get somewhat confused as to the percentage of encoding data. Well, the encoding data is a minority portion of the total data throughput. Let me explain. The total throughput of SATA 1.0 is 1.5 gigabits per second, as it shows in the table here. Only a small portion of that is encoding data. When you remove the encoding data, you're left with 1.2 gigabits of real data. So it goes from 1.5 down to 1.2 or thereabouts. Sometimes a person who reads my book might understand it as though the 1.2 gigabits is the encoding data, but that's not correct. In this case, it's actually only 0.3 gigabits per second of encoding data because you have 1.5 gigabits total, 0.3 gigabits of encoding data, and then you're left with the 1.2 gigabits of real data. So if you want to find out how much you can actually store on the drive, you can calculate it. When you divide by eight to solve for bytes, you would get 150 megabytes per second, as shown in this equation. 1.2 gigabits per second divided by eight equals 150 megabytes per second. So we're solving for bytes to show that final data in its storage place. That is the actual amount of data that can be written to the hard drive per second. The encoding data is discarded once the data is stored. The same holds true for the other versions of SATA. For example, revision two goes from 3.0 gigabits per second down to about 2.4 gigabits per second, which roughly equals 300 megabytes per second. And SATA 3.0 has a maximum data transfer rate of 6.0 gigabits per second. Remove the encoding data and you get 4.8 gigabits per second of real data, which converts to approximately 600 megabytes per second. And it continues on in that fashion for, you know, additional SATA revisions. So in summary, make sure that you understand the difference between bits and bytes. You got the lowercase b for bits and the uppercase b for bytes. Remember, bits are serial. They're one at a time, individual bits. Bytes, however, are normally eight bits 
used collectively or stored collectively. So understand the difference between bits and bytes, how they are measured, and how they are displayed. Also know that the number in bits includes the encoding data, but when the encoding data is stripped away, you end up with a lower number, and this is the actual stored data on the hard drive. 